When it comes to selecting the best parts for your next gaming PC build, there are plainly some components that are more exciting than others. And while we all love to talk about shiny GPUs, picking the right storage for your gaming PC build is arguably just as important. So today, I'm going to walk you through the best SSDs you can buy right now based on our extensive in-house testing. We've rounded up the most popular drives from Corsair, Team Group, Samsung, Seagate, and many more to determine what the best choices are. And I'll also be talking about what other different models and generations actually mean when it comes to picking an SSD. Let's do this. The Deepcore Mystique CPU cooler is here with a highly customizable screen, 360mm radiator, and Deepcore's latest performance optimized FT12 SE fans. The sharp 2.8 inch LED display looks the part with a 640x480 resolution that allows for near infinite customization. Whether you want to display key system metrics, usage graphs, or media files, the Mystique 360 certainly doesn't lack customization. Learn more or buy the Deepcore Mystique 360 at the first links in the description below. The SSD emerged as the successor to the good old hard drive for mainstream gaming PC builds a few years ago and started off in the standard two and a half inch SATA form factor. This used the same SATA connection that you'll find on the end of a hard drive for both data and power. And for this reason was a relatively easy upgrade for those looking to move from mechanical storage to a solid state solution like an SSD. Fundamentally, these memory chips and controllers have got so small and cooling has become pretty achievable that we'll now see SSDs in this small form factor which we call M.2. Now there's a few different sizes available. The most common is 2280 and motherboards will often support two or three lengths of NVMe drives in each slot. It's a simple case of moving the standoff along as you require. Now when these M.2 drives really became mainstream and were starting to be installed in the average gaming PC build, they were built on the PCI Generation 3 architecture. This basically limited them to around three and a half gigabytes per second on the read and the write on your motherboard, something which still provided around six times more theoretical speed than the fast fastest SATA SSDs from just a year or so before. Things then moved on through to the Gen 4 standard, which allowed these drives to break through that seven gigabyte per second mark on the read and write for the first time ever. One more recently, you'll also see PCI Gen 5 popping up like this rather massive MSI Spatium, which theoretically can break well through the 10 gigabytes mark towards the 13 or 14 gigabytes per second standard. Now, cooling is another thing to discuss here. What on earth is going on with this? And what are the differences between a drive like this one and a drive drive like this one. These drives come in a few different options. The first is without a heatsink, and that's personally my favorite way to go. Lots of motherboards nowadays have built-in heatsinks and heat spreaders, which will help to keep the drive cool. And it means you've not got an ugly drive sticking up through your motherboard. Some manufacturers will integrate this heatsink, like Seagate have done here with their FireCuda 530. This is great for things like installing in a PS5, where there is a lack of active cooling and drives are known to overheat, and can be a slightly more efficient solution than installing onto what is more a standardized motherboard heatsink that needs to fit pretty much any drive you put in. PCI Generation 5 has had problems with heat output, at least initially, and that's why we see wacky solutions like this one from MSI, or frankly bonkers options like this one from Adata, where there's actually a fan in there for active and passive cooling. That fan, of course, is powered by a cable which just looks horrendous. Now, thankfully things are moving on, and you'll see here, buried in the plant, the Corsair MP700 Pro SE, which takes things a step further and provides a PCI Gen 5 drive that does doesn't need its own heatsink. That for me is a winner. So then which of these drive generations should you go for? Well, before that, you need to look at your motherboard. Now, I would highly suggest people buy motherboards with PCI Gen 5 capability for this exact reason. Gen 5 drives are still expensive and expect them to stay that way for a little while. But when they come down in price, it'll be nice to have the option to upgrade. PCI Generation 3 drives at this point are frankly not really necessary. And these Gen 4 drives have got cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, making them ever more affordable for your next gaming PC. An example of a couple of great value options include the Team Group MP44L and Crucial's P3+. Plus. It's a little bit sad that I know those model names off by heart. So with all of this information in the bag, what drive should you buy and does the speed you go for actually matter? Well, we've tested out a load of drives from different brands on the Gen 3, Gen 4 and Gen 5 architecture, most of which you'll also find reviewed at the SSD landing page on our website geekort.com, linked in the card section now. I'll cut straight 
straight to the chase and give you guys the raw results first of all. And you can see that drives like Corsair's MP700 Pro SE dive straight to the top of the list. And on the Gen 4 side of things, Lexar's NM790 also punches well above its weight, especially for the price bracket. But that doesn't exactly answer the question of which ones you should actually buy and what key characteristics to look out for. Now, as far as the data and spec sheets are concerned, there's not really much to consider. The speeds you want to look at reviews like this video and what you'll find on our website. And the only real important figure beyond this, in my opinion, is the total endurance of the drive. The endurance is the amount of terabytes that can be written to the drive, AKA you fill the drive up with all your favorite games, you offload all those games, you fill it with new games. How many times can you do that? In most instances, it's far more than what you're ever going to need for a system. And this is, to be honest, more of an issue for those people who are video editing or rendering, where they've got lots of files going through the drive before being deleted. And that process, of course, repeats itself. Now for gaming, Gen 4 is where you want to be. So this is going to be in that region of five, six, seven gigabytes a second. On the budget end of the spectrum, as I say, the MP44L from Team Group and Crucial's P3 Plus are big favorites of mine. I really, really like these drives, both in terms of their price and of course their performance and how the advertised figures stack up to reality. On the top of the Gen 4 standard, you're also going to want to consider drives like the Samsung 990 Pro, an SSD we've personally had great experiences with as far as reliability is concerned, Lexar's NM790, which as I mentioned, punches well above its weight, and the Seagate Fire Cuda 530, another drive that boasts really good specs and good data recovery options too, should you ever have any issues. PCI Gen 5 SSDs are where things get a little bit more complicated. Again, Seagate have a decent option in their Fire Cuda 540. And why I admire the innovation from MSI and Adata, if this is what the future of SSDs looks like, I'm afraid I don't really want it. And for that reason, I have to suggest that Corsair's MP700 Pro SE is the drive I would buy if I was looking for mega speeds. Now inside the games themselves, having a fast enough SSD can be important to performance too. If you're gaming on a top of the range RTX 4080 Super or 4090, you can actually introduce storage bottlenecks if your drive isn't quick enough. Think about it, your GPU is trying to read all the large texture files from your game library folder and the last thing you want to do is scrimp out on an SSD and then pay the price when it comes to frame rate. Now the good news is NVMe drives are getting cheaper and cheaper by the day and I can recommend absolutely the best Gen 4 and Gen 5 drives to buy. Based on those looking to get Gen 4 on a budget, those looking to get the most out of the Gen 4 architecture, and then those considering the top of the range section of the market when it comes to super high speed drives. Maybe not the most interesting component in the world, but certainly a really important one to consider for your next gaming PC build. If you found this video useful, let me know in the comments below. I'll link everything mentioned today down in the description. Thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.